I'm back here at Microsoft for the first time in a, in a while. I used to work here. Um, and today we at Rackspace and Microsoft have a pretty sizable announcement and we're going to learn more about that today. So who are you? I'm Joe Hofstetter. I'm an architect evangelist in Microsoft's communication sector. Yeah. And so I focus on our cloud computing technologies um, from, from DPE perspective. And DPE, that's Microsoft speak for? Development and platform evangelism. So basically what we do is talk about our N plus one technologies and work with exciting companies like Rackspace and developing um, applications and solutions using um, Microsoft's technologies. Yeah, so a lot of people who watch me probably don't even realize my background. I worked at Visual Basic Programmers Journal and worked with the Visual, Visual Basic team and the, now the Visual Studio team for a long time, way before I got into blogging and doing videos and all that stuff. And so I know the power of the uh, uh, Visual Studio community, the, the developers. I mean, there's millions of people who use Visual Studio to build applications and, and uh, build stuff for Windows and Windows Phone, like you have a Windows Phone shirt on. And so what are we announcing with Rackspace? What is Rackspace and Microsoft doing there? Well, what's, what I think is a pretty exciting um, project that, that I've been working on with you guys is primarily the set of controls and plugins for Visual Studio. A lot of people don't realize that Visual Studio is actually an extendable platform itself. And so you could customize Visual Studio in ways to increase developer productivity for specific platforms. And so I've been in the past working with a lot of other Web 2.0 companies and trying to figure out ways to drive Microsoft's large development community to use their platform technologies or to access their APIs and things like that. So basically what we did is we've worked with a company named Nudesic who's been involved with a lot of these um, development projects in, a, in the past to define and develop a number of technologies to make it a whole lot easier for our Microsoft developers to do Windows development on the Rackspace cloud. So if I'm a Visual Basic or C Sharp developer and I'm building an app for the cloud, what does this new um, functionality let me do? Well, it allows you really to manage your, your Rackspace um, environment, so your Rackspace cloud environment, right from the IDE itself. So instead of having to, to learn a whole set of technologies to, or you know, a different um, unfamiliar environment to manage your, your um, virtualized servers and stuff within that environment to change the number of running instances to do things like that, to really manage your environment, you could do that right from your um, Visual Studio environment and then have it um, automatically updated in the cloud. So if, if you needed a new SQL Server box, you can start a new box right from the inside the IDE? Well, if you need a new Windows Server box directly from the IDE, yes. If you need another instance, you know, if you want to scale your application, say, to three to four instances, what you do within the IDE itself is specify the number of running instances. So if, say, number three or four instead of, you know, if you wanted to scale it up to a dozen, that's, that's another functionality that's, that's part of this tool set. And then it lets you publish right to the cloud from your app, so you don't need to store something locally and then copy it up with an FTP client or anything. You can just publish right, right from uh, one of the menus? Yes. Tell me what that means to developers, because th this is the first time in history, I believe, that Visual Studio developers are able to publish right to the cloud and deploy applications, cloud-based applications, right? Visual Studio has been really great for deploying Windows applications, but tell me a little bit about what this means to a, a, an average Visual Studio developer. Well, what it means to your vi Visual Studio developer, again, is that you know, through, through that you know, common IDE, so through, through a set of plugins and technologies, that, that again, you could deploy your application in the cloud and you, you could define how to scale your, your application within the cloud. What it means, again, is, is just to basically simplify the, the application development. Visual Studio and Microsoft developers are tied, you know, tied to the hip. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you could do um, Microsoft development, you know, using other IDEs, or you could use it, do, do, use Notepad or something like that. But over really about 20 years from the predecessors of Visual Studio and including Visual Studio, Microsoft spent a lot of time and money simplifying the developer experience. And so our large, you know, millions of developers globally and all this stuff have really become 
very used to use it, using these technologies and by extending it in a way that, that provides access to the Rackspace cloud itself, it, it again lowers the barrier of entry for a, for a Windows developer. Rackspace can then say, hey, you know, we understand you know, the, this developer community and we've created tools to, to make you innovate on our platform. Now, Microsoft is um, investing a lot, of, a lot of time and money into Azure, right? Into its own cloud-based deployment system, you know, hosting system. Why work with Rackspace if you already, if Microsoft already has its own uh, data center technology to deploy apps on? Well, you know, our attitude here at Microsoft is really that, you know, you, you could do it in the Azure cloud. I personally do a lot of development on the Azure cloud and been working with it since, you know, pre-CTP times and stuff. And I, and I think it's an excellent... Um, CTP is... Oh, sorry, Community Technology Preview. I gotta, I gotta bring the Microsoft guys. <laughs> the, the TLAs, you know, out and, out and when, stuff. When you, when you work here in Redmond, you start talking in TLA acronym soup, and <laughs> you forget the rest of the world doesn't realize what's, what you guys are talking about. But anyway, so... No, exactly. So back to where we were. So, so, so since very early on, but, but ultimately, and it, it, you know, it, our attitude is it, it doesn't have to be, you know, your applications don't have to run in Microsoft's data centers. If there, you know, if there are, if, you know, if Rackspace is doing Windows hosting, then really what, what we care about is developing your applications on Windows itself. Yeah. Um, there's some people who, you know, there, there's some differentiators that, that Rackspace may have, you know, within themselves. Companies might have existing relationships with Rackspace, different contracts and want to be able to, you know, extend a lot of their enterprise applications to the Rackspace cloud yeah. and not have to, you know, here sign another agreement with yet another vendor. And that's yeah. that's a great reason why why someone would do it. And as long as you're doing it on Windows, you know, go for it, you yeah. know, where, wherever the processes are running. Yeah, well, we we have a whole service organization that Microsoft doesn't doesn't provide. So there's a lot of customers who want who want that kind of choice and it's really unique. And what? that's a great point. It's it's ultimately all about choice. It's you know it's it's it, you know it's all about choice within your platform itself, and really what is the the best environment for for the solution that you're developing. Yeah, and so tell me a little bit about what what else you're seeing happen in the world from from a Microsoft standpoint, because Microsoft's uh, Windows Mobile Phone is about to come out. So you're you're ask I know you're asking developers to build apps for that phone platform, right, to compete with Google and, and Apple. Um, and it, obviously Microsoft still has, what, $14 billion businesses here, so there, it, there's a lot of people, a lot of enterprises use Microsoft technology. Um, so there's a lot happening. What, what are you seeing happen from the, the world of DPE and, and the world of Microsoft? Well, r really, and I'm sure you've, everyone you know who's watching this has heard all around, is, is at a very top level, you know, Microsoft strategy is called software plus services. And then you kind of take it down to one level, it's really multiple screens in a cloud. You know, we really see, you know, a lot of innovation and a lot of applications being developed for the cloud itself. And if you really you really think about the, the possibilities and, you know, kind of the, the, the art of, of, you know, the, what's capable out there, it's it's incredible in terms of how you know the, the in terms of how much processing and storage power that any developer can now access yeah. in an on-demand um, in an on-demand environment. So it, you know it, it's it's interesting that you know you're looking back 10, 15 years ago would think about an enterprise application. You know maybe you know let's scale it to 10,000 developers at the most to to. to you know, within an enterprise data center itself. And you think about, wow, I have all this processing power on the back end, what am I able to do? And, you know, so now a lot of the applications, you know, you mentioned Windows Mobile, or, you know, have to be able to scale to to all of the users of a mobile platform. Yeah. So you take all of the, you know, whether it's RIM users, um, you know, with BlackBerry or iPhone users or Windows phone users and stuff like that, your services on the back end have to be able to scale to hit, to, to, for, to be able to serve one or all of those um, different platforms at a time. So that, that turns into hundreds hundreds of millions of users globally, potentially. Yeah. And so really what the, what the cloud enables us to do is to hit all of those users. Yeah. And so you take things like, you know, fun applications, mobile gaming applications, you know, those are very processing intensive, require a very fat pipe between the um, client and the cloud itself. You know, that's a great way of being able to, 
to use you know to use these highly scalable technologies. Yeah. Um, take that to, to even things like um, you know medical research applications and the amount of processing and the numbers that can be crunched in the background in such a short period of time will hopefully lead to huge um, innovations in you know in, in in research and medical technologies. Yeah. So it's just, you know, you, you take the art of the potential, really, that's out there in terms of what we have with all these um, connected endpoints, these extremely fat pipes and these, um, and these um, you know, highly scalable cloud platforms. It's going to be incredible what we see over the next, you know, few years even. Yeah. Where do we learn more about uh, Visual Studio and, and maybe download this uh, new functionality for uh, deploying to the Rackspace Cloud? Well, that's all going to be hosted within the Rackspace environment, and so okay. really how, how we're, we see it working right now is the developer will sign up for the Rackspace Windows Cloud. They'll download these tools and technologies, just you know, install it as a, you know, an add-in to Visual Studio, and then you're off and running. Very cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for spending a few minutes, and uh, thanks for working with us. Oh, thanks for working with us. Look forward to more in the future. Cool, thanks. Mm -hmm.